York City, this is the garment district. Within a few short city blocks, thousands of workers produce most of America's clothing. But behind these streets is the real world, a teeming jungle of conflict, brutal competition, and terror. problem like that up here. We've got officers to discuss that. What do you mean, join the union? What kind of talk is that from a partner? If we ran a union shop, we would not be broke making this dress. Look at all these operations. Look at, look at these operations. We've got to get it made for less. Cut the workers. We could make enough profit and give the workers a living wage. If you didn't give hoodlums a percentage out of every dress to keep the union out. And I don't care who hears it. You take care of your end of the business, I'll take care of mine. You're a designer, design. Take this down to the cutting room. Leave running the firm to me. I left it, and you let hoodlums in. Well, I'm kicking them out. We can run a union shop. I'll never let that lousy union into my place. Never! This is my shop, too. I'm a full partner. I'll pay the workers how much I want, not how much I'm made to pay. Uh. That's all? That's all. OK. He's still the best partner a guy ever had, oh, with all his union talk. Be just a minute. Ready? Any time. It's all right now. said keep it thanks mister hi mr mitchell it's good to have you back Good to be back. Is my father at home? Yes, sir, and he'll be sure glad to see you. Hello? Yeah, Tony, what is it? I don't care how big the account, they'll get their shipment one day late. What are they expecting to do, stay open on the day of my partner's funeral? Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Operator, I don't want any more calls, not until I tell you. Who is it? Alan. Alan. A 
Hello, Dad. Alan. I didn't... I didn't know you... <laughs> Let's not just stand here. Come on in. I'll get it. I'll get it. Why didn't you let me know you were coming? I'd have met you. Oh, I figured you were busy. Oh, I'm always busy, but you don't come home every day. It's been over three years. I did write I was coming. Yes, but I didn't expect you so soon. I thought you'd stay in Europe for a while. No, I had enough of that. When I got out of uniform, I felt I had to get back and get started at something. How about a drink? Sure. What'll it be? Whatever you're having. Well, you decided on anything? I thought I'd go into the garment business with you. The garment business? That is, if the offer's still open. You never wanted to before. What made you change your mind? Oh, I guess being away changed my mind about a lot of things. Don't you want me to? Oh, what father doesn't want a son in the business with him, but... You know, I've been doing some thinking, too. I'd rather you stayed out. Why? I don't understand. Oh, it's too much of a struggle. There's never a minute's peace from one season to the next. All the worry, all the aggravation. Uh, it's not for you. Besides, your mother, God rest her soul, she never wanted you in it. Walter, dear, I... Oh, Lee, this is my son. Oh. Alan, this is Lee Hackett. How do you do? How do you do? <clears throat> Alan, I'm delighted to meet you. I've heard so much about you from your father. Lee's one of the most important buyers in the industry. She's also a very good friend. Alan, I'm very glad you've come home. I know how much it means to your father, especially after what's happened. After what's happened? Walter didn't. He just arrived. What is it, Dad? What's wrong? His partner was killed the other day. Mr. Kenner? Accident. Freight elevator. Oh, I'm sorry. Dad, that's awful. I know how close you were. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Lee, this is Alan's first night home. What do you say we all go out and have dinner together? Yes, let's. Maybe you two would like to be alone. Oh, now, you get cleaned up. I'll call for a table. Please. Walter, I must tell you something. I just left Mrs. Kenner, and she said it wasn't an accident. What does she mean, wasn't an accident? She thinks her husband was murdered. Murder? Well, there was an investigation, the police. Why should anyone want to kill him? Maybe because he sympathized with the Union. That's ridiculous. How can she make such a statement? I'm only telling you what she thinks. Dad, what's it all about? Nothing, nothing. Well, I couldn't help overhearing. It doesn't concern you, forget it. But, Dad... I said forget it. Alan. I'm sure it's just that your father doesn't want to upset you. I wish that's all it was, Miss Hackett. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? Nothing's changed. When it comes to something that really matters, I'm still kept out of it. Now look, you two, the past is past. The main thing is your home, Alan. And at a time when your father really needs you. There's nothing I can do to help if he won't let me. He doesn't even want me in the business with him. Walter, I always thought. Not in the garment business. He's not cut out for it. Oh, Dad, don't try to protect me. I'm not a kid anymore. I know what I want. Walter, I think he does. OK. Be it 
at work tomorrow. Eight sharp. Roxton Fashion. Uh, Mr. Mitchell is busy now. Will you call later? If you don't get it by six o'clock, then sue me. Take one, Mr. Mitchell. All I ask is Mr. Mitchell. You have all those fabrics. I'm sorry. I wouldn't make burlap bags out of that. Come back next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Oh, next Tuesday. This Mitchell's a hard Well, that's a waste of time. That's something, isn't it? Alan, here you go. And when he comes and show him all the operations. And don't be too easy on him. And well, remember, he's the boss's son. Now, don't hold that against him. You'll see how fast he'll learn. Yeah? Mr. Mitchell, your son's at reception. Must have overslept. Good morning, Roxton Fashions. One moment, please. You're late. That's a great start. No excuses. Get here first, leave last. That's what being a boss means. Uh, Mr. Mitchell wanted in the fitting room. Thank you. You remember my foreman? Sure. Hello, Tony. Get it move right. on. Don't waste my time. You got a lot to learn. Come on, I'll show you around. How do you like the place? Pretty fancy, yeah? yeah we fixed it up since you was here. Like Best showroom in New York. A joy to behold. Also available in black. A Roxton romance in fabric and fashion at $29.75. Top floor, Roxton Fashions. Now, Roxton presents number 30. I'm sure you'll find what you need here. Roxton Fashions is really the hottest house this season. Good morning, Alan. Good morning, Miss Hackett. I hope they're not working you too hard your first day. Good morning, Danny. Good morning, Miss Hackett. And remember, while many of our new silhouettes are slim... First thing you learn, you've got to be nice to buyers. Especially Miss Lee Hackett. Very big buyer. She likes a manufacturer, huh? And brings lots of business. Place to be nice to her, like your papa. Same old Tony, nothing sacred. There's no love in the dress business, if that's what you mean. Everybody grabs, you get what they can. Come on. We start in the showroom. You like them models? You figure I'll wind up working in the showroom, huh? Boss is son, where else? Do notice the movement in the back. It really talks. Back talk is terribly important this season. Do you think that back will talk? Even in Scranton. Even in Scranton. Too bad we lose Mr. Kennedy just when the season starts. It's gonna be a big season. Lots of orders. Boy, this is a real dog. Why do I get all the dogs? Start complaining. So I told him, why should I relax when I'm not used to it? Yeah, you know, salesmen, romance merchants. That's what they are. I wouldn't go out with one of them. Maybe, but mine's not exactly the physical type a girl can swoon over. Tony was luckier. She was just a buyer when he found her. Now she's a designer, like I'm a designer. Yeah, and when I found out she was married, I just had to go out with her husband. I don't know what came over me. Uh, they just seem to show the line. The regular house models. Hey, Stephanie, that must be the boss's son. And I had to get married. Hey, Joe. Your papa knows every operation. He learned by lots of sweat. Boss's son, he learned by somebody else's sweat. This shop is a piece work. Everybody gets paid for just how much they do. A garment comes up from the cutting room to the first section. Look, I've been in the shop before. Sure, when a kid, you come in, try to be with your papa. But it's different now. You're gonna work. You're gonna learn why he didn't have time to be with you. What it means to run a dress back. Every minute's like a war. Gotta fight to stay alive. Hey, Tony, come here, I wanna see you. Like this, you watch. What's the matter? This here dress with the bolero. We gotta have more money. Yeah. That's right, yeah. We settled the price yesterday. Yeah, sure, you settled it. A dollar off the work. <laughs> I settled it, you settled it, it's settled. I don't want to start a big simmies, but it takes too much time to make this garment for the money. <laughs> now you listen to me. Who don't like it, pick up your check and get out of here! Now haul it, mister. 
Now suppose we talk this over. It'll get us a lot further than pushing the people around. Those days are gone for good. Who are you? Tulio Renata, ILG. Hey! Wait a minute! What's going on here? Why aren't they working? He's from the Union. In my shop, on my time? A majority here want the Union. Yes. That's right, let the Union settle it! Yes. This is my place! I'll settle everything! With the help of paid pistoleros, a bunch of crummy hoodlums backing you up, scaring the people here to keep them from signing up. Get out. We're gonna make this a union shop. If you come back, you'll get kicked into the street. Or down an elevator shaft like your partner. Just what does that mean? You know what I mean. I said get out. Don't worry, I'll be back. Don't worry! You oh, yeah. the yeah. Yeah. talk about Kenna being killed, that it wasn't an accident. You listening to union bums? I don't like it, no matter where it comes from. If I thought for a minute it was true that you had anything to do with it. Me? Walter, my deal's with you. Why should I lay a finger on your partner? Sure, I know he wanted to chop me, but as long as you run the business, I let him holler. Who cares? I'm sorry it happened, of course, but for you to think I'd have anything to do with it, it's a little out of line. Well, I... I know how it is was a partner after 20 years but accidents happen the important thing is you got to grab hold of yourself understand yeah i'll be talking to you dad can i ask you something can't it wait i'm awfully busy this morning well i just wanted to I've got buyers waiting. Roxton presents number 3082, The Mandarin Look. Leading fashion magazines across the country are heralding the Far Eastern influence, both in fashion. The union organizer, why should he say what he did? Well, as a union, will say anything about a boss who won't sign. Why let him get away with it? What rights he got to exist? Well, you do me a favor, keep out of this. This is your first day in the shop. Learn you what you have to. This is none of your business. Still the same. What's still the same? When did you ever talk anything out with me? Exciting design for only thirty-two seventy-five. Remember, above all, Roxton desires to give you the ultimate in fashion at a price. Okay, will he bring the wire? Right. Mr. Renata? Hey, nine months old, and already she's picking up the boys. I'm Alan Mitchell. Maria, shake the man's hand. I wanted on, to see babe. you about... Say hello. Come on, there you are. Come on. <laughs> Look, I'm not running for president. You know, in this country, everybody's got a chance. Even a boss's son. I came by to ask you about <laughs> There she goes again. What's the matter? The faucet's always on? Okay, okay, I got the message. You know, you women are all alike. Nag, nag, nag. <laughs> Today in the shop, what did you mean about Mr. Kenner? What do you figure? If I knew, I wouldn't be here. You know why your old man's partner got it. What do you really want? You mean it wasn't an accident? 
Come on, get to it, will you? You're here to make a deal with the union to lay off? Deal? I don't know what you're talking about. Look, I didn't come here to take dancing lessons. Spaghetti vendors. You don't work hard enough, old Davy, besides taking care of the baby. Comes Wednesday night, she's got to knock herself out, teaching these moms how to dance Spanish. Hey, today's the time to change the bikini. I got something. Who knows? Come on, let's have it. What makes you think Mr. Kenner was murdered? Where's the wise guy who sent you? The wise guy? Your old man's hidden partner. Why don't you tell that killer he's what? got his payroll? What did you say? Oh, my father was right. The union will spread around anything because he won't Don't kid it. me. I don't know what's going on. And don't tell me my father's in business with killers. If you want to level it. You sure got a lot to learn. Look, what I want to know is this. Hey. Not now. Ciao, bellezza. Great timing. I just changed her. Bravo! Maria, she needs a papa who's a first-class dry cleaner. And her mama needs another baby to keep her where she belongs. Who's stopping you? <laughs> right, a kid. All the time, in the middle of no matter what, find the kid, figlio di... Look, would you please? Oh, yeah. Come on, let's get some air. Hey, who is your good-looking friend? Oh, he's here on business. Business? What kind of business? You're my business. Keep out of it. Listen, if it's to help organize those non-union shop, get somebody else. Tulia's has done enough. Leave him out of it. Well, that's not why I'm here. What for, then? I said keep out of it. Why should I keep out of it? I'm his wife. What do you want with him? Mrs. Renata, I'm Alan Mitchell. Mitchell? Rockstone Fashion Mitchell? The son, not the boss. Anybody from that inferno, that no good. You went there after all I said. Honest to Peter and Paul, I'm married to a crazy lunatic. You want to be a hero for the union? Go organize the okay, devils in hell. Okay. It's a lot listen, of listen, 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 both of you. I don't know what you're talking about. No, you, you've got to believe me. I, I've been out of the country for years. I, I just got back. This is all new to me, the dress business, the stuff about the unions and the hoodlums. Don't you understand why I'm here? Well, you said things about my father. <laughs> Would you like some beer? Don't ask. Get him. Getting harder by the minute. Cigarette? You ever hear of the edge? It's the edge. You take any union shop. They gotta pay scale, plus workers' benefits. But in a protected joint where they keep the union out, there's no minimum, no benefits. That's the edge, the difference in the cost of labor. In Roxton fashions, it adds up to over half a million a year. You mean my father is using... Artie Ravage. That's who your father's using to keep the union out. Who is Ravage? Everything for the needle trade, that's Ravage. Especially broken heads, acid in the face. Don't think I don't know. So who asked you? Yes, and you had to get mixed up with the number one murderer. It's time you went home. Yes, every time I talk sense, it's either mind the kid or go home. 
You can do me a big favor. If he comes into your place, kick him out from me. Hey, Teresa, you want it on the phone? I want a husband, not someone who's 100% union. So answer the phone. Yes, answer the phone. Answer the phone. I can't believe it. I just can't believe my father could get mixed up with hoodlums. Sure, I understand he's your father. But when a hoodlum climbs on a manufacturer's back, it's tough to shake him off. But he couldn't have had anything to do with killing his partner. I'm sure of it. I'm not saying he did. All I know is that after I had Kenner all set to sign with the union, down he went, 27 floors nonstop. to stay away from Rockstone fashion, or you'll be a widow. That's what I mean. Don't worry. See you later. Where are you going? I told you, I got a meeting. You mean you're still going even after the call? I was afraid of a call. I beg you. Come on now, don't give it up, as late as it is. See you later. Tulio, Tulio. in the garment jungle. It isn't only Rockstone fashion. It just happened to look like the toughest. If it's not your father's place, it'll be another, and then another. Tullio won't stop until every shop is organized. It means that much to him. He's not in it for himself, but to help others. Quite a guy. Yes, he's quite a guy. When he believes in something, there's no stopping him. And you? Do you believe in the Union, too? The Union is good, of course. But there's good and bad in everything. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you, Mrs. Renata. Teresa is my name. Teresa. Good night. Mr. Mitchell. Nice to talk to you too. Good night. Blake. Brown. Bartzo. Miller. Alfredi. What's it all about? Search me. Mr. Bronson calls it. There must be a reason. Yeah, but at night? At night. Durio. What's the matter, Teresa? Giving you a rough time? Like another union meeting, stay at home with me better? I do, yes. Well, I got a wife, too, you know. <laughs> Besides, whoever knew you to come late to a union meeting? Oh. Just in time. Go ahead. All here, Mr. Bronson. I called this secret meeting of the organizing committee as soon as I received this telegram. It's from the Manufacturers Association. Now, we've got to sign up every shop, or the union shops will all pull out. Now, I don't have to remind you that 10% of the shops in the garment center are still non-union. Now, we've either got to get them in, or there'll be no more. Well, who are these men? They're hoods. What a lousy thing to say, but so lousy. We're here to give your boys protection, Mr. Union Manager. With you to protect us, we can get measured for coffins right now. I know you're good, you flannel mouth punk. Any wise guy wants a pistolero calls you. Price just doubled. You need more protection than I thought. Crawl out with the rest of the lice! <laughs> you spick bum. That's enough. Now get out of here, or I'll call the police. Here's change. Uh, 
How come they know about this meat? I'm asking how come? Because somebody here is wide director to these goons. That's how come. Yes, I know there are traitors here. In my own committee. But I want them and those they invited to hear your answer. Will you let chiselers protected by hoodlums kill your union? No! Will you bring all shops into the union and so raise the welfare of every worker in the garment industry? Yes! yes. That is your answer? Bring it in! You heard our answer. And here's ours. Tulio! Coven! Our answer is still the same. No more protected shops. Such a lousy thing to say. Oh. Oh. Right in the middle of the season, the union's got to start another drive. Don't worry, your shop they won't organize, I guarantee. You have any trouble day or night, call me. Heat. Every pore like a regular sprinkler system. Mr. Mitchell? Yes? What about lot 472? Check with Tony. Dad, I'd like to talk to you. Alone. I'm busy now. This is important. I said I'm busy. Is this your son? Yes, I'll be through in a few minutes. Well, wait a minute. I'd like to meet the young blood. I'm already ravaged. I've heard all about you, Mr. Ravage. I've heard about you, too. Your father says you're coming in the business. That's right. Well, you and I got a lot to talk about. Not if I can help it. Mr. Ravage is a friend of the firm. So I've been told. Everything for the needle trade, including broken heads. Who says? You wouldn't talk to me yesterday, so I went to the union. I heard. You went to the Union behind my back? I wanted to find out what was going on. I couldn't believe what they were saying. But now I know there must be something to it. You're taking their side against mine, my own son? I'm not taking any sides. But when you start hiring thugs to beat people up and threaten to kill them... Just a minute. Protection's my business. That's all I give your father. And nobody gets hurt unless he asks for it. Is that what you think? He was at a union meeting last night when they broke in and beat him up. And before that, they told his wife they'd kill him if he didn't stay away from here. So let him stay away. You crawl back in the sewer where you belong, you dirty... You spick bum, you open your mouth to me and they'll carry you out of here. That's enough! Mr. Mitchell, I came here because your son asked me to. But I'm telling you, we're going to bring Roxton Fashions into the Union, and this time nothing's going to stop us. And I'm telling you, I'll never go Union, even if I have to close my door. Well, that's just what you're going to have to do. We got the truckers with us. They won't go through no picket line. Nothing will move in or out of your place if you don't sign. He'll sign for your funeral. You kill me. There are 400,000 others to take my place. I'm warning you, this is your last chance. Don't you threaten me. I'm not some little cloak and suitor you can push around. You're dealing with Walter Mitchell. Tell your union bosses they couldn't lick me before and they won't now. Dad, will you listen to reason? Get out. I told you it wouldn't do any good. Thanks for the try. Tell your hoods if they want me, they'll find me on a picket line. A real troublemaker, that one. But don't you worry, the stuff will move, it'll move. When I get done with him, he won't bother us no more. What are you gonna do? Never mind, I'm gonna educate that union real good to lay off us. 
Dad, are you going to let... What do you want me to do? Give in to them, let the Union take over? That's what'll happen once they grab hold. With their hours and benefits and guarantees, 3% of the payroll for retirement, 2% for health, 2% for vacations, always with a hand stuck out for more. The only thing a boss can be sure of these days is an early heart attack. Who guarantees me anything? How do other manufacturers get along? I don't care about the others. I built this place with my own hands, and nobody's going to tell me how to run it. I want to be my own boss. Do you understand? My own boss. That still doesn't give you the right to keep a hoodlum on the payroll. Well, this boy, when he gives it to you, right under the belt. Mr. Junior Executive, when you learn the facts of life in this business... Oh, I learned enough already. But never once did I hear anything about right or wrong. There's no such thing in the garment business. Where are you going? Vomit. Pronto? Mrs. Renata? Yes, who is this? Alan, Alan Mitchell. Oh, hello. Is your husband there? Why, is there anything the matter? No, nothing. I'd just like to talk to him. He's not here. Any idea where I can find him? He's on the picket line in front of your father's place. Since when? About an hour ago. Well, thanks. Goodbye. Wait, wait. Don't hang up. What's wrong? Nothing. Really, there isn't. I just wanted to talk to him. Good night, Mrs. Renata. Please tell me. Uh, what? Hello? Hello? <laughs> How about calling it off? They won't deliver this late. No, try. With cheese eaters in the union, they're sure to know there's only five of us here. You want to get help? That's enough. Just don't let anything get through. A big part of the drive gets one or lost right here. Hold it. Stay put. Relax, it's okay. Mitchell's son. What are you doing here? I tried to call you at home. You've got to be careful. I can take care of myself. But I heard what Ravage said to my father. He's out to get you. Sure he is, but he's not going to scare me off. But thanks for your help. Come on, you better get out of here. Tulio. Go on, you're no part of this. As much as you No, want. it's none of your doing. Now go on, I don't want you to get hurt. Get back. I told you to stay away from here. Tullio, listen. Where's the baby? She's asleep. Get her out of here. Go on home Not with her. Not without you. I know why he called. You told her? I didn't have to. What are you blaming him for? He's trying to save your life. If you can think of me, think of Maria. I know. That's why you brought her here. I didn't have time to find anyone to leave her with. Yeah. Caro mio, haven't you done enough, please? Why don't you do you what do she what says? I say you go on home Tullio. with her. Listen to me. Once and for all, I'm telling you. Come on, I'm doing what I got to do. You take care of yourself and the baby. That's what you gotta do. That way you make it easy all the way around. Please. Alan, do what I say. Take her home for me. Now, come on, beat it, will you? Before I turn on the fire plug. Disgraziato! È finita! From now on, go sleep with the union! Please, let's stop someplace. I'm supposed to take you home. I want to be near Tullio. Is there any place open around here? There's a bar around the corner. Any place. OK. Oh, bella mia, no. Even, folks.
Well, let's see. Would you like a beer, Teresa? All right. Make it two. Two beers. Well, don't give any to the kid. I got six of my own and never touched a drop till they could talk. <laughs> What does that mean? It's an old saying. It means for babies, life is simple. I hear Tulio is one of the best cutters in the trade. Good for 150 a week. And for 80 a week, whenever the union needs an organizer, puts his head on a chopping block. I don't get it. anything come for you I mean for his wife and his child how many times have I asked myself that it's married to you to you what reason could he have big enough his father his father he was a soft man a dreamer who only wanted to make life better for others Poor Taylor. And there was never any choice for Tulio, was there? Choice? Between his father and what he thought was. We were like one person. The same dreams, the same hunger. But if he'd had to choose, would Tulio have turned against his own flesh and blood? What kind of a son would do that? Blood is blood, but there's always a right and a wrong. Yeah. And the choice has to be made. Fashion. Nothing gets delivered to Rocks and no going through our picket line.
Where's the phone? Right, right there. What happened? They got Tulio. Tulio! Give me the police. Hey, she left a baby. Where have you been? I was so worried when I called the office and you weren't there. After reading the papers, I didn't know what to think. I was with the police. Police? What did they want you for? Well, it was my place. It was picketing. There were no witnesses. The others said they ran away. How could this have happened? Renata pulled a knife on one of the truckers when he tried to get through. Ravage told me it was unavoidable. I believe it. I saw it. The way he behaved in the shop, the way he behaved in my office. He was a hothead. You heard from Alan? Nothing. Didn't even come home last night. Walter. Is it really worth all this? funeral, what do you think? The work is tough in all the shops. What are you so excited about? Ain't the first time a union organizer was killed in the garment center? In the old days, when the union started, they used to kill him like a fly. When a union loses a Tullio Renata, it may well weep. For the Tullio Renatas can never be replaced. Even in a union like ours, where so many have given so much for the betterment of others. Every bone in his body, every drop of his blood, everything that a man had to give, he gave for this union. Tulio was every man's friend, as he believed that every man was his friend. Yes, the Tulio Renatas belong to all mankind. For we were his life. Everything he did, he did for us, not for himself. Not for his family. But as Tulio dedicated himself, so we shall pledge ourselves to his memory. All 400,000 of us.
They gave Tullio Renata a martyr's funeral, one of the biggest ever held in New York City. Every shop closed in the garment district. Over 65,000 workers poured into the canyons of 7th Avenue to honor his memory and protest against his murder. This was the final tribute. Teresa, where are you going? I want to know why you're moving. What's the difference? If there's any way I can help, the union won't, or it seems that way. How much more can they do? Besides giving me a job, wanting to take care of my baby in the nursery, begging me to live here for nothing. Then why move? Because I just can't stay in that apartment. Everything I touch, everything I see, like Tullio's still there. What's the use? The floor, lady. Fourth. Never mind moving anything. You can leave your meter running. Teresa, why here? Because Tullio's mother lives here. But this is no place for you. If it's a question of... No, thank you. Let me find you both another piece. No, no. I've got to stay here. But why? Why? It doesn't make sense. This is her home. She's lived here ever since she came to this country. It's full of memories for her. That's all she's got left. And her grandchild. Mama! Mama, this is Alan Mitchell. Mitchell? The son. He's a friend. Oh. Would you like to come in? Can't wait. Drinking don't help. Confession don't help. If I tell you, then maybe I can live with it. Live with it? What are you talking about? I didn't try to save Tulio like I said. I lied to you, I lied to the police, I didn't run after help. I just lay there after they hit me. And the others? They lied to They were the ones that held him while. Alfredi Lazzo? His friends? And you?
Is a man free to do what he wants? I got a kid, too, you know. Maybe that's why I didn't help him after they... After? After what? What? After they ran away and they left me. You were there all alone with him. You could have saved him. You could have saved him! I wanted to, Therese. I was afraid. You let him die! Assassino! Assassino! Afraid of what? What? Stop! Disgraziato! Assassino! Take care of Kovan before he gets to the grand jury. I'll be glad to accommodate. You keep that knife in your pocket. He turns up dead, you and you. But we just can't let him get away with it. A couple of phone calls in the middle of the night remind him he's got a wife and a kid. And now for the latest news on the labor front. The grand jury today failed to return an indictment for the murder of Tullio Renata on the grounds of insufficient evidence. George Kovan... I.L.G. Pickett, who reversed his earlier testimony, apparently was unable to convince the grand jury with his accusation. I hope that ends it. Now, if only some word from Alan. All this time without even a phone call. Does he blame me for what happened? Doesn't he understand? Does he think all this is my doing? I'm sorry, Lee. You shouldn't have to go through all this. You've no idea how worried your father's been about you. Has he? I never thought he worried about anybody but himself. If that's what you came back to tell me... I only came to ask you one thing. The district attorney needs evidence. I want you to tell him how you kept Ravage on the payroll, what for, and how he threatened Renata in your office. He threatened to beat him up if he caused trouble, that's all. He meant to murder him, and he did. Kovan wasn't lying. You expect me to believe that when the grand jury didn't? I heard Kovan before he was scared out of his wits. It was a deliberate murder and Ravage was behind it. There's no proof. Until there is, I'll take his word against the union. Because you want to. Because I know the union. I pleaded with them to leave me alone. If it weren't for the union, I wouldn't have to use a Ravage. That's no excuse for taking a man's life. Are you saying I condone murder? I'm saying that if you don't go to the district attorney, tell him what you know, you're just as guilty as Ravage. Walter, please. Alan, wait. You mustn't leave, no matter what. He's your father. He needs you. Please, I'll connect you. 
Jane, do you know where I can reach my father? No, sir, I don't. He said he'd be out most of the day. Well, let me know when he comes in. All right, sir. Roxton Fashions. And when Artie Ravage gives a promise, you can make book on it. You'll work in Roxton Fashions. Yeah. Mr. Mitchell is here. Right in. Right outside. Come in and close the door, Walter. Aren't they the ones who were accused of... That's right. I put them free to work at your place this morning, and they got kicked out. You put them to work in my place? I gave them my word I'd take care of them. A cash consideration plus steady work. If they got into a jam, which they did, the union tore up their cards. Then Covan told the truth. You lied to me. Walter, listen to me. The union's got a big drive on in case it skipped your head. Bring all the shops in, they holler. There was only one way to stop that organizer. Murder? Muscle is muscle. Use it to turn a buck and you might as well go all the way. For 15 years, I kept the union off your back and you never asked me how. All you did was grab the benefits. I should have known. I just closed my eyes to it. And Kenner. When a halo starts growing, it's a regular disease. What had happened to me if you caught it? And now I got a more delicate situation. Your son. It was him kicked them out. He knew I sent them. It was just like I didn't exist. Out they went. And out they stay. Walter, in my end of the business, a man's word, it's the basis of existence. Them three you take back, and your son's out. You think you can fire my son? Chop went the axe. That's how I think. Marty, we're through. It's still my business. And if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to put you where you belong. How? You got proof? Walter, in case you want to play games, remember how I play. Fired those three hoodlums this morning. I heard about it. The ravage just went with them. You broke with him? Now it's just the two of us. Will he let you go? Leave him to me. I've got a complete record of every cent I ever paid him. When I first started, it was nominal. Then he demanded more and more. Isn't that? Oh, yeah, that's extortion. And I was a party to it. I'll take my chances with the law tomorrow morning. I'm turning the books over to the district attorney.
data. To Mitchell and Son. Mitchell Son. We'll start again. Well, go Union. Sure, we'll give it a try if other manufacturers can make it without the edge. So can we, the two of us. The two of us. We'll click. It's not too important. Mitchell and Son, that's what matters. Here's where the business really starts to grow. It's big enough now. Ah, you can't stop in the garment business. If you don't grow, you die. I keep knocking yourself out. Well, that's the kind of business this is. No, Dad, it's the kind of man you are. I could never see it before. How you were always burying yourself in the business. I had to. I wanted the best for you. No, Dad, it's something inside that won't let you rest. Business was always a place you ran to to get away from yourself. You can't help it. Or even see it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not blaming you. Well, things are going to be different now. That's all I ever wanted. To have a father. Give me a chance. Boss, so we gotta go over to Sachs. Later, Tony. But it's for next week's work. You go home, I'll take care of it. But Mr. Mitchell, are you okay? <laughs> Good night, Tony. Good night, Mr. Mitchell. Good night, Adam. Good night, Tony. Well, I'll be busy for a while. How about you picking up Lee? We'll all have dinner together. Could I ask Teresa to come along? Mrs. Renata. Yes, I'd like that. I'd like that. Call her just as soon as I scrape this off. Miss Hackett, please. Just a moment. Miss Hackett, it's for you. Who is it? Mr. Mitchell. Thank you. Walter, could I call you back? I'm right in the middle of... Look, if it's only business... Only business? Walter, you all right? Never felt better. Unless, of course, you're too busy to get married today. Walter, what, what brought this on? Well, this is a day full of wonderful surprises. More surprises? I don't need any more. See you in half an hour and tell you then. Helen will pick you up at your apartment. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Walter. Works in Mr. Bronson's office. Teresa? This is Alan.
And here is a surprise development in the alleged slaying of Walter Mitchell. The slain man's son has promised that evidence will soon be forthcoming that will lead to the arrest and conviction of the murderer. stayed away and come back this never would have happened don't blame yourself there's only one man responsible my father told me he had certain records if I could only find them Get them to you. You can turn them over to the district attorney. Could I take you? I'd like to stay here for a while. I'll take Teresa home. Hey, Mitchell, lay off of the kid's legs, I'll come next. There's a phone at the corner. No, I'm not going to leave you alone.
before. What do you think happened to Lee? Get some rest. I'll watch. Come on, please. any milk. Gotta get these to the district attorney. They'll never let you get by. I'll have to take that chance. There's no other way. No. If they find out what you're carrying, they'll kill you. I've had enough heroes in my life. Then there's only one way left. To try to get to that phone. Put those away. And lock the door and don't let anyone in till I get back. Understand? Be careful. Mr. Ravage would like to see you. What for? Never mind, Buster. Get in there. Don't let her out of your sight. Right.
All right, wait in my office. I'll call you if I need you. Now, Junior. That's my father's chair you're sitting in. That's right. Here's the deal. I'm not making any deals with you. Sunday morning in the garment district, every building quiet like a cemetery. If anything happens, nobody hears, so pay attention. From your father, I got $2,000 a week cash. Every week. With you starting Monday, 50% of the profits. And the union stays out like always, no signing up. You run the business like I tell you. I'm going to run it the way my father intended after he broke with you and you had him killed. That's a terrible accusation. You murdered them all, Renata, Kenner, and my father. Just keep talking. You'll talk yourself right into the grave. I'm going to finish what my father started. I'm going to put Son, you... Son, if you had anything on me, you'd have handed it to the police already. You don't have a chance, Mr. Ravage. What I've got... <laughs> You're scaring me. A set of books. Books, a record of all you took from my father. Extortion, tax evasion, and that's just the beginning. When the police open the rest of the sewer and your hoods start to talk, you're on your way to the electric chair. Where are they? You will tell me, Junior. Not a chance. Oh, yes. You will tell me. Where are they? Well? Go to hell. Junior, you had enough? That's all he can get. Well, shall we go? Yes. Look, why don't you two run along? Not without you, but I've got... Come on, no arguments. I've already got a table for three. Hey, boss, where you going? 
To lunch. Be back in an hour. But you gotta okay the new line. Can it wait? Wait? With the whole shop sitting? And what about the goods? When are you gonna pick that? And there's a couple of big buyers from okay, Chicago. Okay, okay. You better go ahead. I'll try to join you later. Not even time for lunch. Just because you run a union shop, boys, don't give you the same rights like the workers. They get an hour for lunch, not you. Well, that's the garment business. Roxton Fashions. I'll see if he's in. Roxton Fashions. Uh, Mr. Mitchell is busy now. Will you call later? 